Hello, welcome back to Nixology or whatever. Um, this time we're going to talk some about the Nix language. So there's a thing I've referenced a few times before at nixcloud.io slash tour. And uh, this is a great resource that, that uh, really walks you through a lot of the Nix language and how to, how to think about it, how to use it, which is uh, it's great and I highly recommend you walk through it. But what we're going to do here is uh, I think one of the biggest shortcomings of this Nixcloud um, tour is that it doesn't really get you actually using Nix on your machine in any meaningful way. You're running it in this browser, which is great for learning the language, but it's hard to take that and bring it back to using it on your machine. So what we're going to do is walk through a few of these examples, but um, run that code in a terminal using the various Nix tools that exist. So first off, um, you can see the first page here has this pane on the left that is like a you know runnable code thing and then instructions on the right. So if we run this, I hit run, I get, you know, it's a hash. Technically Nix calls these attribute sets because it's not really like a generic hash table like you have in say Ruby. Uh, the keys are always strings. So this is an attribute set and this is an attribute. It's a string value pair. So when I run that, I get, you know, it evaluates to itself, big surprise. Um, but let's say I wanted to run that in my terminal. So there's a command to do that called nix eval. But uh, the thing you would obviously try first would be to just paste that in and it fails. So the reason is that for reasons, um, nix eval needs literal code to be surrounded by parentheses. And so uh, you do that and, oh, I also used the wrong quotes. Um, so you do that and it works. That's kind of weird, but it's just a quirk of nix eval with, with literal code. Um, so fine. Let's say we wanted that to be in a file. Uh, if you wanted to evaluate that code from a file, we can open whatever.nix, paste the code in, and then we can do nix eval. And then again, we want to do, okay, well, whatever.nix. And it complains because it wants that file to be in the Nix store. So what we have to do again is give it something that's surrounded by parentheses. And just the thing we do here is import that file. So it imports it and evaluates it. Now, uh, if this feels weird, it's because this isn't really the normal way of using Nix eval. And there's actually a different tool that you'd typically use for this, which is Nix REPL. REPL stands for Redeval Print Loop. It's the same thing as like herb or console or whatever. Um, and here I could just paste in that code and get this. So the REPL feels a lot more like what you see in this pane here. So if we go to the next page, we see, okay, if, if we run it, we'll see, okay, we had this, we wanted this instead. And if you read the instructions, it just tells you, you wanna type, understood. Okay, great. That was challenging, right? But we could paste this into the REPL too, and it does exactly the same thing. Cool. Let's go to the next one. And for practice, let's let's do this one from a file. So let's, rather than running this in the, in the um, little box here, we're going to open whatever.nix. We're going to paste that. And now we're going to look at the instructions here. So Simple introduction to strings. We want to complete the string hello world replacing x with variables or strings. So, okay, we have x and x, and it looks like we're trying to print hello world. So we have a let binding here. And I'm not going to talk through what this code means. I think you should do this tour yourself. I'm just trying to show you how you can interact with um, how you can interact with the Nix tools in a way that doesn't leave you knowing the language but having no idea how you would actually run that code without going to this this page and clicking the run button. So in this case I think it's like uh, we add w and an exclamation mark. And then if we do uh, Nix eval import dot slash percent there. So um, I should have added a space or whatever, but you know. 
So let's go to the next one and try something different. Here, let's go into the REPL. Now, I know there's a way you can do local bindings in the REPL. So you could paste the whole expression and then you've got let h equals whatever in something, but then you can't like set the value of h and then try a few different things with it. So let's see if we can find how to do that. So in the next REPL, basically um, commands for the REPL start with a semicolon and Nick's stuff doesn't start with a semicolon, or uh, sorry, a colon, not a semicolon. So colon help, or colon question mark is help. So you can see these are the commands that exist. So first off, it tells you, you can run an expression, which is what we've done so far. You can also just assign things, binding, ex binding an expression to a variable. So what that means is we should just be able to do this, paste h equals hello. It didn't want the semicolon, I guess. And if we evaluate h, we still have h. So this is the thing that normally like kind of doesn't really work in Nix because you would need the let binding and it would have to be closed over in that way. But just as a nicety in the REPL, this works. So now if we try to run this, and let's rewrite that just on one line. OK, now what did the example actually want us to do? Complete the string to hello world. OK, so that's what we want. Let's look at some of the other things that you can do in the REPL. If we hit colon question, you can see there's something about adding attributes from resulting set to scope. That maybe doesn't make sense to us right now. We can build a derivation. We can load a Nix expression and add it to the scope. So let's try let's try that. I'm gonna pop open a new. No, I'm not. Um, I'm gonna open that whatever dot Nix here. And let's say, well, let's just try loading this. So the thing that it actually returns is an attribute set containing one attribute. So let's go to a Nix REPL and go load whatever dot Nix. And it says it added one variable. And then if we go hello world, we have that value. So you can use this to load. Um, uh, the most common thing you'll see done with this is load Nix packages. And this angle brackets, well, I'll show you what the angle brackets means. Basically, the angle brackets just kind of resolves it in your Nix path. Um, This is this environment variable that contains all of this stuff, but it points it at the path on disk at which it can find Nix packages. And then this resolves to that, and if I load it, it loads 11,562 variables. And then I have things like, um, I don't know, Firefox. So that tried to build it doesn't work because Firefox is specified as not being buildable on Mac OS, but I could do things like rip grab and then I get this derivation that I could build. I could probably do build, I've never tried this, I could probably do build rip grab. Yeah, and it was already built so it didn't do any work, but there it is, there's the, uh, there's the output. So I could list that and see rip grab. that was just constructed by that thing I did in the um, in the REPL. Let's actually try something that I don't have installed. If I try build, I bet you I don't have PS tree. Yeah, so that was it. I downloaded it and then there it is. And I could then do bin PS tree and see stuff. So, um, Trying to think if there's anything else that would be useful to show you here. Nick Savell does a whole bunch of stuff. You can look at the help here. Um, Nick's REPL does a bunch of stuff. You can look at the help too. In general, um, the Nix tools have at least adequate help. REPL doesn't show much because it kind of just gets you into the, the tool itself and then it's got that colon question mark. Um, but yeah, so I'd encourage you to, if you're at all interested in learning the Nix language, go through the, the Nix Cloud Tour, but rather than relying on pressing the run button here as your first go-to, try to use um, the, the Nix REPL 
and um, potentially nix eval as a way of, of uh, reinforcing some habits of how to actually interact with the nix tooling rather than just this web editor as you learn the language. Um, yeah, I guess that's it for today. See you next time.